posed by toys are invisible. And that's because some of them contain toxic substances like metals, lead, and cadmium, and chemicals called phthalates. You know, we're all familiar with the dangers posed by lead. Lead has been banned in paint since 1977, and just about as long uh, in uh, gasoline. And it's a powerful neurotoxin that causes chronic problems, it injures IQ, uh, it lowers IQ, and it causes behavioral problems as well. And there's no safe level uh, of lead exposure. And the new toy safety law that came into effect um, limits, put in tough safety limits for lead and other metals, but unfortunately some toys with lead are still slipping through the cracks and finding their ways onto toy uh, store shelves. And we found several products that are in this report that um, have been identified to have lead in them. And one toy that I want to specifically identify doesn't contain lead, but it contains um, cadmium, which is a heavy metal like lead, and that's the Ninja Turtles pencil case, which I picked up just here in Columbus at Toys R Us. And because cadmium in larger toys, like this one, only is restricted in surface coatings, uh, the 600 parts per million cadmium in it is uh, not violating any federal standard. And another product we found was the Le Monde brand mat. This is a toddler mat that toddlers are supposed to lay on. And this was tested at 900 ppm antimony, which is a heavy metal that is also highly toxic. And because antimony in toys is only restricted to the surface coatings, the high level of antimony in this infant mat also does not violate any federal standard. Toxic chemicals called Phthalates, or phthalates, sorry, gosh. Uh, manufacturers use these chemicals to make plastics softer. And um, they're connected to adverse reproductive and developmental health effects. And once again, you know, children are the most vulnerable to uh, these health effects, so it's important that we identify which toys have these phthalates in them. And we tested several toys for phthalates and found them to be compliant with federal standards. However, we found one item the Ninja Turtles pencil case that had 150,000 parts per million of DHP, which is pronounced bis to ethyl hexylphate, but it's important because that's 150 times the legal limit for phthalates in toys and child care articles, child care articles, and that's because this is a pencil case, but it, and it's excluded from these rules because it's neither a toy nor a child care article, even though you can clearly pick this up at Toys R Us. So any child's product can end up in a toddler's mouth. And you know, kids, they, they put these products in their mouths. And so we're calling on the CPSC to include products like this in their phthalate limits. Now I'd like to turn to choking hazards, which are one of the leading causes of recalls. Um, and we'd like to, you all to know, like, you know, this is common sense, but toddlers put everything in their mouths. So it's important to, you know, check to see if these products are going to, um, be a choking hazard. And between 2001 and 2011, 80 children choked to death on balloons, balls, toys, and parts of toys. And in the past year, the commission recalled more than 172,000 toys from store shelves because of choking hazards. Now, toys are banned for children if they are under a certain size um, and they're, they need to be labeled with a prominent warning label for toys um, for kids between three and six, if they contain small parts. Now we believe that two other changes need to be made to make toys safer. First, in our view, this is the choke test tube. It needs to be bigger. We found numerous small parts. Right here we've got a Fisher-Price loving family um, outdoor barbecue. This is a small part from it. Now this easily fits into the choking tube. And we think that, um, that these these products need to be labeled better. And then the second thing that Ohio Perg believes is that rounded objects that pose the same hazards as small balls should also be tested under a more stringent standard. For example, the Littlest Pet Shop toy, which you can pick up just at Walmart, it's in a big bin, you can get them for $5, but they come apart really easily. And of course, if you look at the small choke test too, you know, it almost fits in it. But if you use what we suggest, which is the small ball test, it easily fits through with the test tube. And if you want to use this product, it, it's something you have at home. It's just an empty toilet uh, paper roll. And as you can see, it 
clearly fits through the tube. So it's a choking hazard, and you know it's from mass sale in you know, the local Walmart. So we tell parents and caregivers it's a more reliable test to uh, test a toy if it's posing as a choking hazard for children under three to use an empty toilet paper roll. If it fits through the tube, it's too small for a child under three. 